Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to episode 2 of the AZ800 series. Now, this is the first official episode where we're going to be covering course content. The first episode was obviously just a course introduction. So if you've missed that episode, don't worry about it. It's just a course introduction explaining the course. Now, if you'd like to know what the exam objectives are for this specific exam, you're welcome to go and check them out on the official Microsoft exam. And you can find that link in the description down below. Or alternatively, you can just go run a search in a search engine of your choice, something like Google, and you'll be able to go and see exactly what the exam objectives are on the official Microsoft website. You can also go and download it in the PDF format, you know, just so that you guys know. Now, as for the agenda for today's episode, straight to the point. So the first topic is what is Windows Server? Second being what are roles? And lastly, how do we go about adding these things called roles. Now, if you guys were to go and look at the official exam objectives for this exam and for this course, you guys would very quickly pick up that this course is not just intended for people that's already in IT and it's been in IT for a while. It's also intended for people that's brand spanking new to IT. So if someone's new in IT and they would like to go and certify themselves in server, this course is also intended for them. So there are going to be episodes in this course, especially in the beginning part of this course, which is more for people that's brand new to server and IT and not necessarily for people that's already been in IT. So if you already are in IT and you've got a lot of experience, you might not watch the first bunch of episodes or you might only watch part of them. And then more towards the end of the course, you might start watching more and more of the episodes or just the whole episodes in general. So feel free to go and use the timestamps down below just to go and check out if it is something you don't know or just to see if it is something that you might be interested in. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's take a look at the first topic on this list, which is what is a Windows Server? Now, with regards to Windows Server, a server is a computer that provides shared resources. And these shared resources could actually be anything. So that server, as soon as you go and install the server operating system, it's for the most part kind of just like a client computer, which a client computer performs tasks for an end user, end user being you. So when you go and install Windows 10 or Windows 11 on your computer, what do you do in that computer? Play games, do office work. So that is the kind of tasks an end user would go and do is documentation, playing games, that kind of stuff. Now a server is in the beginning very much like that when you've just installed the server operating system. I mean, sure, it might look slightly different, but for the most part, it's very much the same. Now, where does the difference actually come in? On servers, you get to go and add what we call roles, something we're going to get to in a moment. And once you've done that, that server does something for you on the network. It shares some sort of resource or it gives you some sort of service in most cases. This could be a service like giving you an IP address so that your machine can access resources and access the internet. It could provide you with an account. It could provide you with special permissions so that you can access certain resources. It could possibly provide you with email, access to printers. Maybe it'll allow you to access certain websites, potentially a database of some kind, which could potentially be something like a SQL database. That is the purpose of a server. So it kind of says it in the name, it's to serve you with some kind of service, hence the name server. Now, as for client computer, I think we pretty much covered what that one is. That is something that you or your end user or your client would go and use, their personal machine. So any personal machine is normally referred to as a client or in some cases, a node. Now, what the heck is an operating system, also known as an OS? So operating systems controls the allocation and the usage of hardware resources and are the foundation on which programs and applications are built. Now, the operating system basically allows you to be able to use your computer. This could possibly be Windows. And in this case, this course is obviously just about Windows operating systems. Or it could potentially be something like Apple, perhaps Android, although it's not very wise to go and install Android on a computer doesn't work that well. It does, but you know, it's not really meant for computers. It's more for phones and tablets, obviously. So the operating system is going to allow you to go and install things like software applications. You're going to have to go and install drivers and updates from time to time. 
it allows you to use that machine. Now, it's not a specific way that it's going to look. So depending on the operating system you've got installed, what build and what version, that will determine what it looks like and ultimately what functions you have available. For example, maybe I want to go and do an encryption on my computer. Maybe I want to go and run virtual machines on my computer, for those of you that know what that is. And whether you can actually do that is not just determined by your actual hardware. It's also determined by the actual operating system build and version that you're running on your computer. Now let's take a look at our second topic on that list, which was what are roles? Now, roles are made up of role service components that provide additional functionality associated within the role. Now, I've got a screen grab there as to where you would go and add them in server. I'm going to show you guys practically in just a moment. We'll do a quick demo for you guys. So when you go and add a role to a server, you're giving that server a role to play on the network. So as I've said earlier, if you just go and install the server operating system, it's very much like a normal client operating system. But as soon as you give it some sort of role to play on a network, and this is most commonly done by adding an actual role to that computer, that server will serve you of some sort of service. That's the purpose of the role. This could be something like the user accounts we just mentioned. That will probably be something like an ADDS role, Active Directory Domain Services, what that stands for. It could potentially be something like DHCP, DNS, Hyper-V, Windows Update Services, and so much more. It's a very, very big list of possible roles to get. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what role you add. It's going to give that server a purpose. Now, how many roles you add depends on you, and it depends on the server's resources. So obviously, the more beefed up that server is, the more RAM it's got, the more CPU power it's got, and all that kinds of stuff, the more roles you can go and play, the more roles you can go and add. You need to be careful though. Some roles are lightweight and some of them are heavyweight. So a heavyweight resource role would probably be something like Active Directory, ADDS. So that role consumes a lot of resources, a lot of RAM and a lot of CPU power. Now that is normally combined with a light role like DNS. So if you're going to go and add too many heavy roles or just too many roles in general in your server, you could potentially make that server a little bit laggy, non-responsive. It's just going to be slow you know that's not something we want now moving on to our last topic on that list which is the actual demo how to go about actually adding these roles where do we do that and how do we do that so for this one i'm going to go over to a windows server virtual machine and here it is now this is obviously a virtual machine that's got server installed on it to be more precise, Server 2019 Data Center. Not that that matters because the way we are going to go and do this and what we're going to go and do is the same on Server 2019, 16, 2012, R2, and downwards. Normally I would say upwards, but in this case, downwards. So what we see in front of us is what we call the Server Manager Dashboard. This actually pops up on all servers by default. So if you just installed server onto a computer, the server operating system that is, you will find this popping up by default. Now, if you do go and close it, let me go and close this puppy. I'm going to close it. It looks very much like Windows 10, does it not? Now, in some cases, you might find a little icon here in your taskbar, which allows you to go and open the server manager if it does not open automatically, or if you went and closed it like in my situation. If you need to go and open it and you do not find it at the bottom, you can also go click on the start button and there is an icon there it says server manager and there is an icon that says server manager i'm gonna go click on that sucker close that and we are back on server manager now as you go and add roles they will start displaying here on the left hand side now what we see here right now is as default as it gets there's nothing installed in the server absolutely nothing I literally just installed server and that's it. I've done nothing on this computer yet. Now, as we start installing roles, they're going to start reflecting on the left here and you'll start seeing their status here, you know, whether it's good or bad. Red is obviously bad. That means something is wrong. So where do we add them? You can go here to this little number two that says add roles and features. That's one way. Another way, which was in the screen grab I showed you guys earlier, was to go to the top right hand side where it says manage. And there's an option that says add roles and features. 
Now, if you find yourself in a situation where you potentially have roles or features installed already, you can only remove them from here. And it's going to be literally the exact same menus you're going to be going through, same little wizard. You're pretty much going to do it exactly in reverse. So if you tick the box, you're going to go and untick a box. That's pretty much what's going to happen here. So I'm going to go here and say add roles and features. I'm going to click here on next. 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 And here we find ourselves with a pretty decent list of possible roles that can be installed. So this list could potentially be bigger depending on if this virtual machine is running in the cloud or on premises, depending on what version of server you're running. All of that can determine you know, what you actually see in this list. Now, if a box has been ticked and it's grayed out, you would normally see little brackets behind it that says it's been installed. In my case, you can see pretty much nothing has been installed, obviously, because I mean, I just literally installed the server operating system. And if you want a role, you just go and tick the role in question. I'm going to tick that one randomly, randomly. Here we go. Active Directory Domain Services. So I'm randomly just clicking a role. So I'm not, we're not going to explain this yet. That's going to be the next episode. So in the next episode, episode three, maybe episode four, we're going to start explaining what Active Directory is, what ADDS is, how does it work, how do you install it, how do you configure it, how do you promote it, that kind of stuff. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to go and look at episode three. That's what we're going to be covering episode three. Episode four might be covering something else, obviously. Now, what we see in this list, and I'm going to explain this again in episode three, Microsoft has taken the courtesy of automatically adding features that they think you're probably going to require to be able to run that role. So as soon as I go and add that and I click on next, it's going to take us to another list of options we can go and add. It looks like this roles list. Except that list is going to be features. You can see here on the left. Currently, we are on server roles. And the next one's going to be server features. These features can be seen as add-ons to those roles. Sometimes you might find yourself going through this whole wizard, not adding any roles, and just skipping to the features role or features section. So you can go and add a function or a feature, an add-on, if you will. So sometimes you might just add features, sometimes just roles. But usually, if you add a role, you're probably going to go and end up adding features as well. Now, this is pretty cool that Microsoft automatically adds those features for you because you might not know what features normally goes of that specific role or you just have no clue what's happening or you're just lazy like me. So I'm going to go and say add features. I'm going to click on next. And on this menu, the ones that's grayed out is obviously already installed, like BitLocker is already installed, you know, storage is already installed. You can see it says installed in the back. But this one here has been ticked. It says group policy management. I did not tick that. Microsoft automatically ticked that because that's generally something that goes hand in hand with ADDS. I know that, and some of you guys might know that, but there's also some of you guys that might not know that. You might never have done that. So this is actually pretty cool that Microsoft does that because maybe I've just forgotten to click on that box for this particular day, or maybe it's my first time and I just don't know what I'm doing yet because I'm still learning. I mean, we all start at the bottom and we work our way up. So I'm going to go and tick some features if once I'm happy, click on next, you click on next and you start installing them. Now I'm not going to install this right now because this is not what this lesson is about. This lesson was just about explaining to you guys what server is, what a role is and how to go about adding a role. So that pretty much concludes this first episode. I'm going to try my best to keep these episodes as short as possible, bite-sized chunks, as some people might say. So some people don't like very long videos. Uh, what I normally do if I give very long videos or if I make very long videos, I will go and add timestamps in the videos. You can find them in the video descriptions down below, but they also they should also appear in the videos themselves in most cases. So if it's a very big video, feel free to use the timestamps if you're only looking for something specific. But I'm going to do my best to try and keep these videos as short as possible, bite-sized chunks, as I said, and that's going to make it a lot easier for you to navigate. So you simply just go and look for the episodes that you don't know. If you see it's a topic you already know, you obviously just skip that particular video and you wait until the next one comes out, which might not be something you know. All right, guys, all that's left to do here is to give this video a like, to subscribe if you're new to this channel. Otherwise, you're not going to know when episode three comes out or any of the other episodes. And I would very much appreciate it if you let me know down below what you think of this series and if there's anything you would like to see in this particular series. All right, guys, see you on episode three.
Mm-hmm.